years ago, over 30,000 enthusiastic participants thronged into Beijing for the Fourth World Conference on Women, which has since been ascribed as the largest United Nations Conference on Women. They were unified by a single purpose, which was gender equality and empowerment of all women. For those that may not know, the Beijing Declaration and Platform for Action was adopted by 189 countries in 1995. This was at the United Nations Fourth Conference on Women. Previously, the Third Conference on Women had been held here in Nairobi. And after Nairobi, there was the document which was named Nairobi Looking Forward. And it is out of this document that African women were galvanized to take over the world. Shortly after that, they went to Beijing. Katika maisha yangu, ni mekua kiongozi wa mkutano wa Beijing ambao ndio umenipa kufahamiana watu wengi sana na kufanya kazi kwa niaba ya wanawake wa dunia hii This is truly a celebration a celebration of the contributions women make in every aspect of life After the women's conference in Nairobi 10 years ago that the world focused for the first time on the crisis of domestic violence what we are learning around the world is that if women are healthy and educated, their families will flourish. Today is the day which we are dedicated to the young people and they are very vibrant and very interested and very focused and very knowledgeable with the platform. We are thinking after the country to also look at how the United Nations can really bringing the young people in different issues in order to create a better world. We talk about those women who are abused, those women who are raped, those women who are violated. We are holding them away at arm's length and pretending that we are not those women. It's not about unpacking what the problem is in our countries. We already know what the problem is. What are we going to do about it? 25 years later, it's an abomination to try to ask the same question. Well, the demands were the 12 areas of, um, of concerns. But in them, there were a few that were very pertinent to us. Poverty, the girl child to be on our own. In decision making, we also brought in environment. So these issues worked very well for us, plus the other aspects which came in you know, like violence against women and girls, you know, we also were part of that. The world has never been the same again since Beijing. A lot is happening in most of the countries. And Kenya, on its part, we have made great strides in terms of the 2010 constitution. But the most unfortunate thing with Kenya is that we have resisted implementing what is in the constitution as relates to women, especially passing legislation that will enable parliament to adhere to the rule that not more than two thirds of either gender should occupy elective offices. We came from Beijing, we were very excited. We found a huge backlash at home. But you know, I decided I was busy in reproductive health, but the problem that we were facing was having women not on the decision-making table. So I took over that challenge of putting women in decision-making. Although we came back uh, with a lot of zeal and did a lot of demands in our countries, we ended up having national gender policies, we ended up regional policies, we ended up even African policies, you know, the protocol, uh, uh, and even the sub-regional like SADIC protocol, uh, Maputo plan for action, and all, all those things. Les mamans ont bien fait, ont beaucoup fait. Je pense qu'ils sont, qu'ils ont bien préparé la relève. Parce que si c'était pas ces mamans qui ont été présentes lors de Beijing 1995, on ne serait pas là aujourd'hui en train de discuter de nouvelles formes pour la situation des femmes dans le monde. Je pense qu'elles ont bien fait. Je pense qu'elles nous ont créé un espace, un espace vraiment nécessaire 
pour que la voix des femmes soit entendue, pour que les droits des femmes soient respectés, pour que la femme ne soit plus considérée comme en second plan, mais que la femme soit toujours au, au devant de la scène et que la femme puisse jouir pleinement de ses droits. Indeed, progress had been made and has been made through the setting up of international treaties before and after Beijing. Treaties like CEDO, the Convention on the Elimination of All Forms of Discrimination Against Women. CEDO has been touted as the International Bill of Rights of Women. The Protocol of the African Charter on Human and People's Rights of Women in Africa, which is popularly known as the Maputo Protocol. Additionally, the Sustainable Development Goals, also known as the SDGs, whose goal number five notes that gender equality is a necessary foundation for a peaceful, prosperous, and sustainable world. Finally, Africa Agenda 2063, that according to the African Union, it aims to deliver on Africa's goal for inclusive and sustainable development, and is a concrete manifestation of the Pan-African drive for unity, self-determination, freedom, progress, and collective prosperity pursued under Pan-Africanism and African Renaissance. Even with the progress, there have been challenges and gaps that need to be urgently addressed if Africa is to realize full empowerment of its women and girls. Many countries are really below the bar and we need to do more, member states need to do more to achieve that. Secondly, the area of uh, uh, technology. Now we have all this technology, but you see that not many women are able to access or use uh, what we can call technologies. The issue of sexual reproductive health rights, we, we feel that we are backtracking a bit. The, the other issue is about the issue of abortion. The abortion issue becomes quite big. Issues of education. While many countries have now put a primary education as free, free to many, but we still feel that there is need to work on infrastructure. You see climate change has really affected us. And when we still see people not respecting issues of climate change and saying it is okay, they continue to cut down trees, they do all sorts of things, at the end of it all, it is affecting women more than, than the men that destroy uh, our, our environment. Now more than ever, there's actually been a bigger push to ensure the voices of adolescent girls are being heard. I think now more than ever. And I would say even just in the past couple of years, I've seen a stronger movement of saying like, let's hear what adolescent girls have to say. They do have something valuable to add to the conversation. I mean, not enough. <laughs> let's be realistic, there's not enough. But I think the truth about it is that we have to be honest that it's not just about bringing adolescent girls to come tell their stories. You know, so that they will come share the story that happened or them as a girl child. But really, when we're talking about adolescent girls, we also mean meaningful participation. For my country, the girls there don't even know they have rights. They don't know they have sexual and reproductive health rights. And now, I have the information. I know my rights. And when I try to stand for them, I'm considered an outcast. So, I want them to know their rights, to fight for their rights. Because there is no future without us being educated. I have seen how women can are able, why, how rural women, women who live in slums and who we always imagine they are targets of our development. Women who we think we are sitting in conference rooms and, uh, and preparing strategy documents for them. But women who analyze their own situation, they are able to define their path of change and they are, going, they are always able to get at the center of that strategy and be able to lead it. Tulipo toka siku ya mwisho ya mkutano wa Beijing. Tulikubaliana kabisa ya kwamba lazima tuchukue maazimio haya tukayafanyie kazi. Na tumekuwa na vipindi vya miaka mitano mitano vya kuangalia kutathmini tumefanikiwa kiasi gani. 
katika kutekeleza maazimio ya Beijing. Nchi mbali mbali zimetoa ripoti zake na zimeonyesha kwamba kuna mafanikio ambayo tumeisha yafikia katika elimu, katika afya, katika uchumi, katika, katika nyanja zote ambazo tulizitaja Beijing. The major big ask was for governments and state parties to actually commit to recommit to gender equality and committing by providing resources, financial resources, which are sustainable, which are predictable, and to strengthen the gender machineries and to ensure that there is social protection. For the continued success of the women movement as a whole, it is necessary to pass the baton. The generational gap must be filled through the involvement of the younger generation of women. Their voices must be considered and heard at the decision-making tables. It also has to be inclusive of everyone, including the minority groups like the LGBTQI. The first thing that I would like to see is that in embracing the diversity of women, I would like to see that de decriminalization of um, the LGBTIQ plus um, community. There is no future without us being educated. Yes, and girls have to learn how to stand for themselves because these spaces belong to us. We need to create, claim and influence our spaces. We have to be honest that it's not just about bringing our adolescent girls to come tell their stories. You know, so that they will come share the story that happened or them as a girl child. But really, when we're talking about adolescent girls, we also mean meaningful participation. We also mean that when they come in and they say that these are the issues that we have and these are the ways in which we think we can address them, that that should be taken seriously. This intergeneration is that the young people should be part and parcel of the demands. Some policies for girl child, it was in a Beijing platform for action, so the young ones felt they'd been taken care of, but they, we didn't involve them. Everybody thinks it is necessary and it is a must that the young ones should be part of these processes. And therefore, because everybody is already accepting, let them take the spaces. Let them not be intimidated, let them take the spaces, but as they take the spaces, they should be not be complaining. They should just make sure they integrate themselves. They are able to analyze issues. They are able to, to connect with the systems and sustain, like I said, the activities that have already been there. La femme handicapée est une partie intégrante de la nation. L'État ne pourra pas se, déplacer, se, se développer sans une frange importante de sa population qui est aussi les femmes handicapées. Les personnes handicapées en général font 2 millions et quelques. Si 50%, 51% de cette population sont des femmes, ce que nous sommes 1 million et quelques, qu'on ne peut pas laisser pour compte. Et cela est valable pour tous les États africains. Enfin, pour pouvoir faire un développement aussi, il faut qu'on connaisse notre nombre. Les il n'existe pas de statistiques concernant le handicap. Et dans nos pays également, les statistiques manquent. C'est en fait ça, les statistiques manquent. Et dans nos constitutions également, le handicap n'est pas pris en compte. Et effectivement, il y a certains pays, après de longues années de, de lutte, de mouvement de personnes handicapées, ont réussi à inclure le handicap dans leur, dans leur constitution. Et c'est là aussi, c'est notre cri de cœur pour que tous les pays africains prennent ça en compte. Si on dit qu'il y a la discrimination pour tous les sexes, le genre est prohibé. Il faut autant pour le handicap. Donc, aujourd'hui, nous avons appris beaucoup de choses qui sont faites, mais encore, il y a beaucoup de choses qui restent à faire, et cela commence par l'inclusion. Anawatu Ambao, Akiwa Ereza, Yari ya lizungumzo hapa wanya muelewa kwa kiingereza tunaita lobbying. Weze, kama unawezo wa kulobi laisi wako, lobby. Kama unawezo wa kulobi kanisani, lobby. Kama unawezo wa kulobi traditional leaders, lobby. Ndiyo kazi ambayo tunapasho kuifanya sasa. Ili tuwa kikisi agenda hii ya Beijing.
inaeleweka na kila mtu na inatekelezwa kwa kasi kubwa. We have been called veterans. I think we need to be given an assignment to protect the gains. It is so easy to lose gains if you do not institutionalize them. Not more than two-third gender rule is a starting point. The constitution says this is the barest minimum. The journey is to gender equality. And then our focus also is on the elective and appointive positions. What about at home? That's what I'm saying. Where we are being disabled from being on the front line and being made to be 10 kilometers behind the starting line. As we concentrate pushing on the elective appointive public positions, we must focus on resocializing society because it's beginning at home. I would really hope that governments are actually willing to commit to the idea of gender equality. Not just by saying that they do, or not just because they see women as contributing to the economy of their countries, but because they're deserving of their rights. The government has to train at least, I think they have to train at least a teacher in a school as a sexual reproductive health rights counsellor. Because African parents, they don't really think they could talk to their children about this sexual reproductive health right things and stuff. So I think a teacher should be trained who will handle issues of girls in schools. CSOs really have a responsibility as a civil society to hold our governments to account and to really urge them to be able to make those commitments. We want to see the resources on the table. We want them to employ the strategies and to also work with civil society. We can caucus together, then go to our countries, prepare our joint contribution for Beijing Plus 25. Imagine we check what has happened in our countries since Beijing? What has happened to us in the women movement? And what it is that we could do differently so that the next 10 years, as we are focusing now on the sustainable development goals, how can we do it differently so that the next decade becomes more profitable in terms of gender equality than it has been.